My name is Octavio Rodaslanda and I am a, I'm part of a network. Uh, I am organizer in a network, in a network of local uh, communities and social organizations that's called the National Assembly of Environmentally Affected Peoples. And this is a, a kind of a big and small network at the same time because it uh, comprises over 130 local communities and organizations that are struggling in Mexico uh, for environmental justice. And this means that they are local communities that are being affected by the construction of roads or landfills or the operation of a mining corporation or the uh, introduction of uh, an energy project or a housing project that is destroying uh, water resources or any other kind of resources that are vital for local livelihood. So uh, this, is a, this is a network in which we are trying to create solidarity between local communities no matter what they are being affected by. Uh, and this means that people affected by landfills or roads can, be, uh, can have solidarity with people affected by mining or tourist, uh, big tourism uh, construction projects. And, and, and this also means that uh, uh, the, the necessary creation of awareness within, within the Mexican society that uh, we are living in virtually a collapse of uh, the environmental conditions in Mexico. Uh, I, I know this is a very, very strong word when we, when we talk about collapse and many people think we exaggerate when we say collapse, but uh, when, when I'm saying that the National Assembly of Environmentally Affected Peoples is a big and small uh, network, uh, I, what I mean is that we only, uh, we only comprise uh, a, a little, or a, a very small part of all the environmental conflicts that are active in Mexico. We, we estimate that there are at least between four and five hundred uh, environmental conflicts active right now in Mexico and and this means also that there is a, an ongoing and uh, growing destruction of environmental conditions that will lead to health impacts and that will lead to social injustice as well which is already very very a very grave situation in Mexico for example what I, what I'm talking about is the uh, is the fact that uh, the Mexican, the Mexican government has given, as a concession, 30% uh, of the Mexican territory to mining corporations. And, and we're just talking about mining. And 75% of all the mining concessions in Mexico, which would represent something like 20, 22% of the Mexican territory, are, have, have been given away to Canadian corporations. And this has been done in exchange of virtually nothing. Uh, that is that until 2013 Canadian corporations could come and uh, apply or request a, a mining concession in the Mexican territory and the Mexican government would give it away practically for free. The, um, there is an estimate that uh, they have only paid 1% of what they take out, these, these Canadian corporations, and the impacts have been immense in, in local communities. There have been killings of, of people who are opposing uh, the, the mining concessions in Chiapas, there have been killings in Oaxaca, and there are many other conflicts uh, uh, in San Luis Potosí, in Veracruz, in many, in many states in, Me in Mexico. The Canadian corporations, the mining Canadian corporations, are violating human rights and they are doing it with the complicity of the Mexican government. So we know for a fact, we know for a fact that the, whenever we have uh, stated this or tried to state this uh, before the Canadian embassy in Mexico, the Canadian embassy uh, says they, they don't have anything to do with that. And uh, they they try to they try to create the impression that the Mexican communities are fighting each other and they are killing each other, but this is not the case. Canadian mining companies. I can give you a, a very specific example for Tuna Silver Mines in San Jose del Progreso in Oaxaca, was responsible for the killing of at least two people in this community, and both of them were opposed. 
to the, the, the mining operation. And, uh, and they have been sustaining the, the authorities that committed the killings uh, on their behalf. So this is, a, uh, this is not, not, not a thing that we are seeing lightly because we work with the local communities and we have, and, and we have seen how these, these companies operate in Mexico. So whenever, uh, whenever governments such as the Mexican government or the Canadian government are talking about respect for human rights, we know they are lying because we can, we can see how they operate. And as soon as the, the, the fee for a mining concession was, was raised just a little bit, this is uh, of no consequence for the mining comp corporations, what we know also for a fact that the Canadian ambassador threatened to withdraw all the, all the Canadian investment in the mining sector in Mexico. Uh, uh, we would have, uh, in, 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 if that were the case, we would love to see the the fee raised to 50 percent, so all the mi all the Canadian mining companies would leave the country, because what they are doing is not only taking away our mineral resources, they are violating human rights and they are destroying the environment. They are they are destroying water resources, and they are destroying people's lives. So. Uh, uh, we are we are asking our Canadian fellows to to, to assist us to, to denounce what the Canadian mining companies are doing, not only in Mexico but in all Latin America. Thank you very much.